Hands. They're climbing trees, building swords, and playing in the mud. And that's okay. Hey, look at me. This is my new way to get up. Welcome to the world of Forest Kindergarten, a classroom without walls at Gilbert Elementary in Walker County. They're out two hours a day, some, some days more, uh, depending on the weather and what we're studying. And right now we're doing a lot of uh, living and non-living things and what plants need and what animals need. So the best place to learn that in science is outside, of course. Students learn the same standards they would gain in a traditional kindergarten classroom and so much more, like critical thinking, imaginative play, social skills, and problem solving. They're using their imaginations with just parts of nature, sticks and rocks and lichen, just things that they they find. And we have very little man-made materials out here. We use a lot of twine, uh, buckets and shovels. Gilbert Elementary Principal Matt Harris wanted to offer more STEM-based education at his school. He had a clear vision when he took over six years ago and started implementing it. Piece by piece beginning with a garden that would eventually birth an aquaponics program. We try to make it really highly engaging and, and exciting for kids, and we've seen a great change in our attendance. We've also seen a, a change in our enrollment. Another way Gilbert Elementary became more attractive to students, teachers started to gamify learning. Could you clear the board and draw a toy plane? The Innovation Hub serves as a positive feedback loop for students to test the concepts learned in the classroom. If they haven't mastered the material, they can't win the game and move on to the next level. They're doing well in class, they're, they're academically and behavior wise, so uh, they, their teachers feel like, okay, they can handle this, they send them down here. We, we excite them about things they're already learning and send them back to class excited to know what's next. A wide range of STEM-based activities form the Innovation Hub, including Osmo, Snap-on Circuits, and Little Bits. <laughs> I like the loud ones. A gizmos and gadgets kit with the tools to invent lights, switches, and other devices. In the early grades, they will be able to accomplish all the cards. And then in the later grades, in fourth and fifth grade, we say, okay, great, you've done all these challenges. Now we need you to create something that will accomplish this goal. And then there are, there are no instructions, just a purpose, just like in the real world. The Innovation Hub also features a building corner, video games like SimCity, and a media center where students can record podcasts and videos. The shining star of it all may be the computer lab which features Lego robotics, Spiro balls, coding, and 3D design. I'm hoping some of these kids actually go into engineering and robotics. I know that is a huge field that we're needing more of, and that's why we're doing stuff more along coding. Students in kindergarten start working with kits so that by grade two, they can be introduced to programming. So we actually have a build station set up so the kids have to come in and figure out what they're going to do that day, what object they're going to go after and try to complete, and then how are they going to build the robot to do it, and then how do you program everything that you build. Gilbert decided to fill the VEX IQ team this year, a programming club that's more advanced than LEGO Robotics. At first it was just a robot and then we figured out that we had to do programmings. So then I wanted to stay even more. These eight third, fourth, and fifth graders make up the Gator Bites team. They won multiple trophies this school year, including tops in the state of Georgia for robot design. They kept saying they were really good, and I, I thought they just were uh, you know, excited about their team. On this day, the Gator Bites are practicing after school for the VEX World Challenge. When the competition begins, they'll need to be able to communicate how they built the robot, why it's built that way, what they used, how the gears are set up, how they programmed it, and then showcase it. You have to work really hard to get better and better. And that's what I did. What's truly amazing about what's happening here at Gilbert Elementary is it's primarily done with existing funding and staff. We've probably not gotten $20,000 in grant funding over six years, which is really a failure on my part. Uh, but I think it speaks volumes for the staff and, and what we've been able to do. So what's next for Gilbert? 
Harris would like to adopt digital badges, a report card of sorts showing competency in 21st century skills. But first, he wants students to design a viable electric go-kart. Anytime a student can come to the teacher and say, will you teach us? Yeah. That is, that's a win all the way around. A win achieved by taking a risk and doing something different that's now a model of success for countless other schools.